Hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this month as we celebrated and spotlighted amazing women on our social media platforms for Women's History Month. It was a fabulous party celebrating everything that makes women truly amazing. So thank you for watching and hearing us. Now here is each day's post combined for your listening pleasure. Cheers to girl power and endless possibilities. It's very important to surround ourselves with people that it will lift us, it will appreciate us, and it will give us the all the feelings that we require, you know, we are very empathetic. We want love. We want to have appreciation. So it's very important that we surround ourselves with healthy relationship, not toxic relationships. So we're not going to look for validation from the outside. But here, if we love ourselves, then whatever comes from the outside is a bonus. Yeah. Instead of thinking, I want to lose weight, it's, it's more about... I want to be healthy. I want to be mentally and physically strong. I want to be, so if we have family, think about, you know, how, if you're going to look after yourself, how amazing your life can be when, when you will be grandmother, when you will be 60 and 70, you can still enjoy life. When you can actually retire, you can do what you always wanted to do instead of sitting in a chair and spend all the money on medicine and doctorates. Yeah. So for me, it's all about if you really come from self-care, self-love and self-respect, the weight loss will be side effect, positive side effect. But it needs to come from here. Self-love and self-care, it makes it's not something that we should think about. It's essential. It's something that we should prioritize in our life. We also know the gaps that we needed filled. Yeah. And so we probably, you are doing the same thing. It's like, you're filling the gap that you knew that needed to be filled in you. And you're empowering women to step into the, into their purpose, into their light, into their power. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, it, you're right. They're helping me with the blind spots and which is why I just started to launch the new program, Power Up. Because Oh, I love that. So right. You're so right. Power Up. Yes. I love that. Power Up. Yeah, obstacles are going to happen, but guess what? I make them the fuel. That's my fuel. Oh, that that yeah. makes sense, Joy, because that's why you're powering up, right? Oh, come on, Andrew. Because you're, that's the fuel. You used what could have put you down and you used it to, to move you forward and to keep you going and keep you fueled and keep you energized and keep you knowing what the prize was at the end. And I love that. Oh, thank you. Okay, I now let's start me crying over here. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my tissue? No. Yeah. <laughs> Our essence is so unique. There is no one, no one like you ever has been, ever will be. Your essence is yours alone. And that essence has very much this is a this is a gift that you're bringing to life your very essence your very presence is a gift um this is so important for women this is this is the journey of loving ourselves becoming sovereign in our lives so that we can wear our crowns Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, I got um, mine today too. Wait, wait, wait. Yes, do it. Okay, I'll put mine on. Yeah, too. put yours on. <laughs> we are having a party today. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes. I love that. You know what? It does take confidence. Yes, it does. Yeah, it takes confidence. And you know, um, for me, my mom helped me build my self esteem. So oh, kept, beautiful. Yeah, just telling me, you can do it. Mm -hmm. And she, you know, I grew up in a house of love and she would mm -hmm. let me try things. And she was my biggest cheerleader. Oh, you are so lucky you had a mom like that. And I love your energy. And you, you said something about my energy. And I'll tell you, uh, eight years ago before I discovered a few things about myself through the coaching and, and what I've been doing, 
is I didn't realize I was hypoglycemic and my energy would go woo down, woo down, woo down. Two o'clock, three o'clock in the afternoon, I would need a nap or a cup of coffee. I have better energy now at 65 than I had at 35. Because my blood sugar's more stable, my energy's always high, you know, and it, it's made a big difference in my energy level. I mean, I'm always bouncing off the walls pretty much until I'm hit the bed. One of the people on my vision board is a woman named Ernestine Shepard. I don't know if you've ever seen her look her up, Ernestine Shepard. She was the world's oldest bodybuilder. Oh, I think I have seen her. You've seen her. She's the most beautiful woman. I have a picture of her back on my, and she, I'm like, oh my gosh, I want my back to look like that. I, I'm not thinking I'm ever going to like spend two or three hours in the gym every day like she does. She's a personal <laughs> trainer, but you know, hey, it's a goal. It's a, you know, stronger, better, healthier. You know, we all want that. So yes, I want to be like you and Ernest <laughs> when I grow up. <laughs> Yay. All right. Let's go arm in arm, girlfriend. That is saying that if you think you can, you're right. And if you also think you can't, you're right. It's about your mindset. What do you think you can do? How do you see yourself? This thing most especially affects women more than men. You know, like there was an example that was given, like for people, professionals, that when there is an opening, or even for business people, when there is um, maybe a contract opening and they need to submit their proposal, if they're like, if a man has like 25% of what is being requested for, the man will still go ahead and apply yeah. and go with like all the boost of, oh, at least I know 25%, let's do this. But a woman that has 75% of the requirement will still sit down and be wondering, no, but I don't have 25%. Oh, I, I can't do this. Oh, I'm not up to it. Oh, I'm not good enough for this thing. And the woman decides not to even apply because you're already thinking you're not good enough. So at the end of the day, is the person that shows up that will get the job, even though the person has 25% and you have 75%. But the fact that you're not even showing up because your mindset has disqualified you, like, no, you're not good enough for this thing. You end up not getting it. So I just want to encourage each and every one of us. So let's just, you know, just do it. Just go ahead and just take on the challenge. Don't yeah. let us allow our, our mindset to keep us down to think of my teacup as being full of love and whenever fear starts getting in that teacup yeah. I want to think about love instead of fear and I and uh, somebody recently just talked about love and fear the two things and if you become fearful and that can turn into hate um, you can overcome that fear by thinking of the love because you can't think of both of them at the same time. So I prefer to keep my teacup full of love. Good. That's good, Kate. So I tell you, keep giving, keep serving because it does come back to you. And guess what? Your cup will overflow <laughs> and you'll have more than you need. And guess what, ladies? You'll be sipping from the saucer because God will supply so much that you won't even need the cup. You'll just be uh, using the saucer, sipping from the saucer, okay? <laughs> Let's talk about uh, asking for help. Why is it so hard? <laughs> that is a really I'm big over it. Question. I don't have a problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. I've, I've learned to do better with that over time, but I know a bunch of people who are not comfortable with it. And I would wonder if there are voices in their heads that are saying there's something wrong with you if you don't know these answers. Like you're supposed to know how to do these things, even if you've never been exposed to it before, even if you know you haven't read a book or haven't spent five years at your office doing this, you're supposed to just know how to do these things. And so I, I do wonder if it's the voices in their heads that are getting the best of them and feeling like they need to show up in a certain way or people will find out that they're phonies, right? We can't show up yet as our authentic selves at work, which is a shame. We have to be this ideal employee. I think that's probably the fear right there is that, you know, I got to make sure I'm taken care of. Yeah, yeah. And, and with me, I just like just a little bit of uncertainty. I like to just kind of step out on faith just a little bit. 
I do that I too, I but not too far. I a little bit, probably a little <laughs> bit more than I should, but so far, so good. Yeah, so you're doing good though. You're doing a good job. You're doing <laughs> Thank a good you. job. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm a more like a Peter. <laughs> I'm like, God, I want to come over there where you are. <laughs> And he's like, okay, you're going to have to step outside the boat. So, <laughs> oh, I done jumped out of this boat. Uh-oh, I guess I better either swim or I'm going to have to fly or soar. <laughs> I done did it now. <laughs> I used to be a poser. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, I worked for a photographer about 25 years ago. And I followed him around to local schools in the area. And I helped him with the children, make sure they were sitting up. Nice. Yes. 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 Oh my gosh, you have no idea how important that job is. I photograph for um, a few schools locally who are um, just smaller schools. And so I, you know, I take their kids, their student pictures for the yearbook and then, you know, sell them to their their parents as well and i'll tell you what without a poser i can't fathom doing that i just can't imagine it's so important that's a very important job in my career so good for you and it takes someone with a lot of patience because you get those little kids all they want to do is swirl around in their chair and play. well i have experience if you need me well there you go i'm telling you that that's an important position that's a skill set you, you make our jobs far easier. And moving forward is just taking moment at a time. And I think so many times we're trying to go from like A to Z. We're trying to go from January to December. I got to accomplish all these goals and I got to like look perfect doing it. And it's okay if you just accomplish one goal of just being and being still and keep your sanity. Um, so that's something that I have to improve on because I know I can get very futuristic and want to accomplish all these goals. Well, on that, you know, January to December thing, Drea, I am already starting on Christmas shopping. Just saying. <laughs> it's the best time to go because this is when the deals are carried. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I've, already started, I've already started designing some new ornaments for next year or this year. Yeah, I'm, that's me. <laughs> well, yay you! <laughs> no. Uh, well, as long as you're having fun, don't be too hard on yourself. Okay? That is so true. <laughs> I am having fun. For me, writing is not an easy thing. So this writing journey, that's one of the the demons that I um, had to face because mm -hmm. the universe kept telling me I needed to do a blog. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, I don't write. I was always told, don't write, Joy. You're a horrible writer. Oh, and my workbook yeah. kind of flowed out of me. So it's like, okay, oh. we can do this. Grammar part's not necessarily great, but I hired an editor, the Very person cool. who edited, first edited my workbook. So we have a system going and she says, my writing's gotten better. That was a big thing for me wow. is to, um, to write. Actually doing what we're doing today, being on video, is a really big thing. I, at one moment in time, I would never have been able to do this. Yes. One of mine was doing what we're doing today, is getting on the video. You get knocked down, but you get back up, keep moving forward. Now look at the two joys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who would have thought? <laughs> see, and see, if I hadn't started the show, you and I would not be here. This is true. You know, it's figuring out how to get up and getting the strength to get up to face whatever it is and you know and just know that you're going to be spread eagle on the ground and you figured a way to get back up. Yeah. We undoubtedly face challenges in big ways and small ways all throughout our life. Uh, but no matter what the challenges, we should not allow ourselves to be held by change. And what we want to do is move through change purposely accept the challenge and then move through the change. And number one is choose peace instead of panic. Try to rein in your thoughts, redirect your perspective. We know that we may not have all the answers or we don't have the slightest clue what to do next. Start with just 
closing our eyes, just taking a second just to breathe. Just breathe in, hold it for like four seconds, and then just exhale. Four seconds. Let it take four seconds. And repeat. Hold it. And then exhale. Take a second sometimes. We just have to stop. We have to breathe. And then trust the process. We want to trust that good things are coming. And like, I was terrible on camera for years. Like I have been doing this for many years now, so I'm great, but I was so, I was the absolute worst. I actually used to put a hairbrush. I would not have thought that. No <laughs> way. Right, but I mean, this will, this will give everyone hope because they're like, okay, you're pretty great now. Um, I used to put a hairbrush by my camera and talk to my hairbrush, like pretending it was something or someone. And that really helped me get over it. It's like such a silly, simple little thing, but I was like, this helped me. And then after a while, you're like, oh, I'm actually really good at this. And it's super easy. So even if you feel really awkward at first, no problem, everyone goes through that. Just let yourself go through the motions and keep at it because like, before you know it, it'll be so natural and so easy. I love that you said the hairbrush. <laughs> I still have that hairbrush. <laughs> <laughs> I just talked about this, how I would be in my room with my dolls and I would uh, play school with them. I was the teacher. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, uh, my grandmother would come over and visit and she's like, who is that child up there talking to? Is she okay? <laughs> Look at you now. You were preparing since you were like five years old for this joy. Look, get your, your comb, your gosh. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Joy literally has a comb with her. Like this is perfect. <laughs> so one of our goals is to help women break through popular myths and beliefs and what it is to be fierce and run a successful business. So you're doing that. So I'm going to also present you with my SOAR shovel. Ooh, I love it. Yes, and SOAR means step out and rise. Mm. Yes. You Ooh. Yeah, you know I'm artist. So this didn't look like this. It had to be painted pink. I painted it pink, got some glitter on here. Oh, I love it. Yeah. That is, that is cool. cool. This, this is a reminder that you have to constantly dig in and do the work. Yeah. You have to dig in and do the work. So you hang this up. Once you uh, achieve this in my program, then you hang this in your office because it's a reminder of what you accomplished. You did the work. Not me. Amazing. Plus you yeah. can turn it around and hit the limiting beliefs on the head with the shovel. <laughs> <laughs> So it has two purposes, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I love it. <laughs> this is so much fun. And also be grateful, be grateful. When I said that some people cannot believe, how could you be grateful in the captivity? Yeah, you can find some, some gratitude. And also, also forgive, forgive others. If if we don't forgive, we have built that bitterness inside and it will tear you apart. You, know, you have to find a way to forgive people around you. And I also, also learned that building a relationship with people in the, in the camp, it helped me a lot because I feel like home. Although people are in the same bad situation, but we make friendship. We help each other, we support each other. We have sisterhood in this in this unpredictable situation, but at least we have a sisterhood going on. You started sisterhood. <laughs> <laughs> this is where the beginning of our sisterhood community started is with you, Sarah. 
think some t- tangible things that women can do just to kind of get started on like self-love and learning to love themselves for me. Um, the number one thing is just a realization that like you don't have to prove your worth. Like I spent so much of my life thinking I had to prove I was worthy. I had to prove myself. I had to prove it by doing this, that, the other thing. I had to work X amount of hours. And that's part of what's instilled in us in our society nowadays. Like, but really when it comes down to it, you were born worthy. God made you worthy the minute you came into this earth and your worth never changes. So you were born 100% worthy of all the things that are coming to you in this world. And you can't do anything to change that. Nothing you do that is bad is gonna take it away from you. And nothing you do that is good is gonna give you more worthiness. You are 100% worthy just the way you are. Isn't it so interesting, like looking back in in, um, self-reflection of like your early childhood years and seeing that like who you've, learned who how you are like you always were i played with you know my baby dolls and i would teach them they were my students and so oh. I always knew that i'm walking in my calling and in my purpose because my grandmother would come and visit and i would hear her saying to my mother who is she up there talking to <laughs> <laughs> i am up there playing school or i'm either playing church <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah, it was funny. And she's like, what is this child doing? And my mom's like, hey, I don't even know, but I had the best mother. <laughs> they let you be you. You let me be me. For me, my sanctuary is nature. The point is when I look at my upbringing, where my happy place was, we did have a backyard and my sanctuary, my happy place was having a garden. Yeah. And yeah. I was I would play with the insects, like not kill, but like I I like I love ladybugs and butterflies and and I I forgot that until I my my older years when I came back home to my love for nature and feeling how much it nourishes me. That's when I remembered, oh my god. Yeah. I can, I don't need to feel like an imposter. No, you are not. You don't have to Ladies, you do not have to devalue your work. Even if you feel like the lane is crowded and there's a lot of people better than me, guess what? They are not you. They don't bring the personality, the flavor that you have. A lot of introverts are attracted to me. I'm an mm-hmm. extrovert. And I kept wondering, why are these introverts attracted? To we want to be like you, Joy. <laughs> we want to be that comfortable showing up and talking to people. God can move a steering ship. Okay, if, if a ship is just docked in port, you can't steer it. If it's moving, if it's just moving a tiny bit, it can be steered. A huge ship, there's a little rudder and it's very small. And that l- rudder is what actually steers the ship. So sometimes just a very small adjustment in that rudder can help you take a different course. So, but the thing is you have to be moving, right? And if you're not sure, if you're like, I'm confused, I'm not hearing God, well, take a chance, right? God's grace is huge. He has huge mercy. And a lot of times we're not taking a step because we think everything has to be perfect. I've got to have everything perfect before I can step out. That's fear. That's fear speaking. That's doubt speaking. And so I'm just, I I would say, start to move, start to take a step because God can steer a moving ship. Okay. I'm thinking. I'm like, Love hey, it. ladies, you got to move away from the duck. Come oh, come on. <laughs> yes. I love just, that. Just, you know what? <laughs> Take that little step, move away from that duck. I love it. Oh, <laughs> Joy did not know I was going to say that answer, everybody. I mean, if this is not, if this is not uh, God designed, I don't know what is. I love it, Joy. I love the pop. <laughs> Something else also. When we're going through tough times, you might need a little more sleep. You might need a little more water to hydrate yourself. You might need to just kind of lay low a little bit when you wouldn't normally. This is just for now, it's not forever. This is a bump in the road and you're gonna get through this. 12 years ago, 
I would have never ever created goals or resolutions for myself because I had a serious track record of failure. And let's be honest, like nobody likes to feel like a failure. Like nobody wants to know that, oh, if I try this, I'm only gonna fail. So eventually we stopped trying. And that's exactly where I was at. And my self-worth, it was fading away. Like I hated the reflection in the mirror. And that's exactly where I was 12 years ago. You've got to find clarity, right? You've got to get so crystal clear about what you want out of life and why you want it, right? Like sitting on that couch, I finally saw the real life of where I was heading. I saw myself 10 years from now, right? Like I was like, oh my gosh. And so I got really crystal clear on what I didn't want. And then I sat down and I made a list of all the shoulds and the coulds and the musts, like all women do, right? And I was like, okay, what do I gotta do? And I knew I couldn't do it all, right? Cause that list was like 50, 50 freaking to-do lists down. And I said, Carissa, what are gonna be the two things that you can start with that you are willing to commit to, right? I'm telling you 12 years later, it's still for my kids, it's for my clients, but most importantly, it's for me. Like I feel freaking amazing. I'm on fire, right? Like I'm fearless. <laughs> I'm everything that you say. <laughs> I love it. What gave you that courage? And I love you said the people pleaser. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I did not know that I had boundaries. Do you know, I, I was so good in business that I knew how to create a mission statement. I knew how to create value statements. I knew how to create structure and everything for business, but I didn't know how to do it for myself. I did not know that there were such a thing as personal boundaries. I did not know that I was allowed to say no. I did not know. I thought I always had to prove myself. I thought I always had to give more and, you know, I, I would work twice as hard as anybody and I would do so much for free to prove how good I was. And it just pulled me in so many directions that I became so disaligned from who I am that I didn't even recognize myself anymore. Wow. Yeah. I love that personal boundaries. You know, I always say no is a complete sentence. Nobody told me that. <laughs> this is another thing I know is an unpopular opinion. We don't have to be the end all be all to everybody. We don't have to be that to everybody. So I think so many times we feel we have to be everything to everyone and you neglect yourself. You should be your first priority because you are in a long-term relationship with yourself. So if you neglect that, who's gonna come and help save you? Close your eyes and you think of the most joyful experience you have. You're calling in joy, you're re re-feeling that. And the challenge is, is day-to-day life, right? We're busy women, you know, kids, our businesses, you know, and and it's like, okay, stop for five minutes, you know, take that pause, trust that joy can totally get you out of your comfort zone and catapult you towards the life that you desire. You don't always have to get it done right away, push yourself to the limit where you break. You can also take a quick little time to just realize, like refocus and figure out what we want to do that day and just give a self care day, like you said, Yeah. and not push <laughs> ourselves too hard. Sometimes I meditate and I just, just sit in a room for 10 minutes and okay. just figure out what I want to do. Like I can just take a break and really live in that moment. Cause I worry a lot about the past and the future, but I'm like, we're in the present right now. We need to really focus on the good things that are happening right now. So I love doing that. Yeah. Setbacks can't, they're not always bad. You know, sometimes if you miss something, like maybe you'll realize in the future that, well, it was maybe good that I didn't do that. Maybe this was meant to be in a certain way that I don't need to specifically think of it as bad. And I just think of it as, okay, that's just a little help. And that's just the way it's supposed to be going and really focus on that. And there's all, it's all happening for a reason. And yes. I don't take it too, too seriously. Yeah. I just enjoy doing yeah. my life. Yeah. Andrea, what is your greatest achievement? I didn't give up. I didn't give up when, when I could have, when I could have let the voices uh, other people's opinions when I could have let um, anxiety and depression 
uh, beat me down, when I could have let the hurt from old wounds keep me hidden, I didn't give up. I worked through them. I just, I kept, I kept showing up and I kept going there. And I think that's my greatest achievement is that I was able just to keep doing it, even on the days that were really, really hard. And there were a lot of days and there still are a lot of days that are really hard. And I love that you said uh, that you didn't give up because that's one of the things that if I could go back and talk to my younger self, yeah, that's one of the things I would say, keep going, don't give up. You're going to have some hard days. You'll get through them. Yes. Keep going. Keep talking learning. about uh, perfection. Because oh, yes. that was one of the things for me. You know, I needed all yeah. my little ducks to be lined up. And <laughs> wow, until I started getting coaching myself to realize, oh, this is a safe place where I can be open. I can ask questions and I don't have to be embarrassed. That's a good point you made, Joy. So for me, the fear of making a mistake was something that I had to overcome. But I think being able to be a coach is every time you have a client, you grow with your client and your work is not ever finished either. And accepting that has probably been my biggest lesson. You do not have to have, like you said, your ducks in a line. Sometimes my ducks dance and waddle and are on a rave. And I have no idea where half of them are. That's what some like, sometimes life feels like. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing your insights and experiences with us. Call me later, girlfriend. We're going duck hunting. We got to find all our ducks and get them back in a row. <laughs> I go back and watch myself because I laugh at myself. <laughs> You have to be able to laugh at yourself because if if you're not going to take it lightly, yeah. no one else will. You're, you're being too hard on yourself. And don't yeah, do yeah. <laughs> yes. And I've been asked to interview people. I've gotten subscribers. And so I go, OK, I'm doing something right. <laughs> and thank you to all of my subscribers. I yes. Love it. Yes. I love that they come on the show. They come in and they, yeah, they tell us what they like. and. Um, Hey, I'm only called to serve a portion of the universe. So thank goodness God didn't give me everybody. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Huh? What a relief. I, I can think of a few people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he only gave me a few people. Hey, and I'm going to serve them and we're going to have so much fun. for celebrating Women's History Month with us. We hope you enjoyed our amazing tribute to women making history. Yeah.